hands are on my mater. Yes. Mr. Said, so considering that there's no precedence in uh, overturning this kind of a black and white severity, uh, how far can you guys actually take it? Well, first of all, I don't read the rule as being black and white. The rule that's been cited says that the OIA may take an action. May is a legal term that gives discretion. So frankly, the rule is being misinterpreted. It, there is discretion. I understand also that there have been instances in the past where this kind of an action has not been taken to disqualify people over these kinds of eligibility issues. So I disagree with you that there are no precedents, and I disagree with you that the rule is black and white. And I think in those circumstances, it behooves reasonable adults to find a solution instead of telling to a bunch of kids who are faultless that I'm sorry, we screwed up, but you guys are going to have to take the blame for it. So it's not necessarily the rule, it's the action that was taken. Yes, they didn't have to take this action. As I say, the rule, the applicable rule which is cited, says the OIA may do certain things. They may do them, they may not do them, as the circumstances require. And in this case, there were a range of actions that could have been taken that would not have had the consequences of the action that they chose. What's an example of uh, precedent? Well, we understand that issues of eligibility came up in the past, and we understand that the OIA executives and their attorneys are aware of those, uh, in which basically they have been counseled not to uh, exclude people because of technical violations for which the individuals were really not to blame, and which the school was not to blame by attempting to take advantage of the situation, competitively or unfairly. So there are precedents apparently in their own proceedings to go back several years. I don't have all of the details of those precedents, but I do know and I do read the rule without question to give them flexibility and discretion. And so they read the rule to be black and white. They're wrong. Whatever, whatever basically they're saying, they're wrong. They had discretion and then it becomes a question of exercising proper discretion, giving people an opportunity to be heard. You know, what really should have happened is this complaint came in they should have allowed the game to go forward on Friday night. They should have taken their time this coming week to figure out exactly what was going to do, what was going to happen next, and they should have then basically determined an action in due course after hearing everybody who was affected by what was going to take place. That didn't happen. And all of that, I think, is an unreasonable way to make a decision of this importance to all of these people who are here and to other people in the community who are concerned about it. Can you give some examples of the consequences that you are outlining? Well, if we get an injunction, if, if it comes to that, basically Kahuku is going to be reinstated and they're going to have to include Kahuku in the state tournament. Now, how they do that and, and how they go about that is up to them. There are lots of possibilities. I mean, they could certainly still play the Mililani game, the championship game. There's no impact to Mililani because they're in the state championships anyway. So they have the possibility of still playing that game they have a week's leeway in their schedule. This year, everything was advanced by a week. 
and they do have a week's leeway that they could set back the state tournament by one week and still play all the games. So they have time to do that. There may be complaints. We've bought plane tickets. We've made arrangements. All of that can be adjusted in the interest of fairness, and I'm sure that the sponsors who are providing some of the transportation and hotels and so forth and so on would be more than happy to cooperate because this is something from what we understand that people overwhelmingly want Kahuku to be able to participate in. Not just the school and the community, but people in the community at large. Everybody who's contacted us, everybody who's been interviewed on the, on, by the media so far, everybody has said that they feel that this is a situation that has not necessarily been handled properly. And again, we don't call upon anybody to flaunt rules, but you apply rules in a fair and even-handed manner according to the circumstances, and we think there are lots of ways to deal with this issue without having the drastic consequences which we now are experiencing. If Kahuku somehow made history and got things to turn around, uh, and the HSA already has all these tickets and hotel rooms booked, and is at risk of losing tens of thousands of dollars, if the sponsors wouldn't back down, what happens then? Well, we understand that there is some interest on the part of the state association and other people to try to figure this out in a timely fashion. Uh, it may not be necessary to play the Milani game at this point, and it could very well be possible to go forward with the existing schedule. There are lots of alternatives which I would not impose upon them. All I want to do is impose upon them as one of those requirements that Kahuku still participate. How that participation occurs and on what kind of schedule, we'll let the athletic associations attempt to resolve that among themselves, and we don't need even necessarily to be a part of that. The fact is they have alternatives, and we want those alternatives to be looked at, and we want them to come up with a reasonable solution. And that's really all we're asking at this point. And then just for the record, the reason why the HSA is included in this suit is because? Well, because they're a necessary party. I would assume that they're not going to allow Kahuku to participate in the state tournament without the approval of the OIA. And so basically what we're saying here is whether the OIA approves or not, if a court orders it, we want to make sure that that participation is going to take place. And so I'm not aware that the state association at this point has done anything wrong, and I certainly don't want to cast any aspersions to anybody there or anybody associated with the state association. But the remedy we're seeking is to include Kahuku, and we want to make sure that all the parties who are affected by that will be bound by any court order or any compromise or settlement or solution that we find. Eric, how confident are you guys that you will succeed in this? Well, you know, my sense is that, first of all, there's pretty universal uh, belief that this was unfair. As far as I've seen, there is widespread belief that the people who were affected by this are blameless. This involves a kid who, under very unique circumstances, uh, apparently enrolled in the ninth grade, was sent back to eighth grade, and then came back, and somehow the records did not reflect that he had been in ninth grade for some short period of time previously, so technically he is a fifth-year student. But nobody did that deliberately, and of course, as everybody knows, he's a minimal participant, and this is the first year he's ever been on the football team. So with all of those circumstances, basically, I think that it's clear that the decision and the outcome that was enacted by the OIA is way out of kilter with what we know to be the facts. My belief is any judge who's reasonable, any leader of any school system who's reasonable, would take issue with the decision and the impact of that decision under these circumstances. So if in fact we're right that the rule does provide for some discretion, if we're right about the facts that this decision that was made is totally inappropriate in light of the actual circumstances, then I frankly have every expectation that we're going to come up with a solution, whether it's imposed by a court or whether it's reached by some sort of agreement among people who want to solve this matter rather than just simply exacerbate the situation.